What's up guys, it's Marietta. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to talk about what you can do if you were not selected in Diversity Visa Lottery. What are your options, pretty much. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. That's why I'm doing this live Q&A. Um, so there were people who were actually messaging me, asking me, is this green car lottery real or is it a scam? Like questioning the, uh, the, the if, if, if this lottery is even valid, you know what I mean? So yes, it is. I mean, there were people that I know, uh, in fact, some of my previous clients, two of them, they told me that they were selected and then additionally per, additional person that I, uh, I had consultation with uh, messaged me that his brother was selected and so yes guys this this lottery is real and thank you so much for your likes and your hearts i already see some of you tuning in hi there hafizullah hi everybody if you guys have any question about general question this is going to be a little bit general q a how you can leave the United States without a green card. If you were not selected, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer that. So we can have a conversation. Con conversation today. I don't need to just talk about what I have to say, but uh, you guys can ask. Um, so yeah, so let's go back to what I was saying. Um, the lottery is real and there are actually people who are selected. And just because you were not selected doesn't mean that you should question whether this lottery is real or if it's scam. It's, uh, it's real. Um, now, if you were not selected, um, some people are very sad. Like I, I, I read sad comments uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, many of you left comments below and um, I didn't have a chance to reply to all of you. But uh, I saw, I, go, I went over the comments and um, there, there were many sad comments. So if you were not selected, don't worry about it. Or maybe you didn't even enter the lottery and therefore, um, obviously you were not selected. Uh, but uh, the purpose of this, uh, the purpose of this video what I want to do is to, you know, tell you a little bit more about what are your other options. Okay. Isa, hi, my name is, my name not, not in the EV lottery. So that, are, you, are you saying that you were, you did not enter the lottery or are you saying like you were not selected, Isa? Um, because if you did not enter the lottery, you obviously couldn't be selected. Uh, because only people who actually play the lottery, meaning they enter their information, they submitted the application last year in uh, October and November. In fact, in November 2017, they were part of the lottery. And uh, if you did not submit your information, then obviously you were not able to be selected. You were not, you couldn't be selected. And also not every country is eligible, okay? I don't remember exact countries, guys. Um, there is a list of eligible countries. Uh, so you can check that list if you just Google it, you know, DV state, DV lottery that state that gov. You can read the information and you can find the eligible countries. And not every country is eligible. So what are your options if you were not selected or if you are not on the list? Well, there are other options how you can obtain a green card. Um, number one is through employment. If you are employed in the United States by the US employer, eventually they can sponsor you and you can get a green card. Tarek is asking, hi, I want to study in the United States, but I cannot afford it. If I can get a job over there, so what are my options? Well, to be to be to be honest, um, if you cannot afford to study in the United States, if you cannot afford to pay the tuition, you should get a loan, because you cannot study and work at the same time. It doesn't work like that. Uh, if you are on student visa F1, you are not allowed to work unless you are on OPT, which is optional practical training, and then you can work. Otherwise, you are not allowed to work. And because of that, you cannot really, um, you know, study and work at the same time. 
and uh, and I perfectly understand where you're coming from. I understand your your question, and I actually understand the the struggle because I been there myself. You know, when I moved to United States 11 years ago, I enrolled to school and I had to take a huge loan to be able to study and to be able to pay for for my school. You know. And as you know, you cannot legally work while you're on student visa. And so I'm sorry to say that, but you have to get a loan if you want to study in the United States. And some, some schools might actually give you, some schools might actually provide you with a scholarship, but it is rare. Like you should check the requirements. Um, you should check the requirements. Each school is different. Each program is different. Hi, I want to talk to you in private. Okay, Isa, well, I appreciate that, but you know, there are many people who talk to me and I do, you have to purchase the consultation if you want to talk to me. Otherwise, I only talk, I only provide free consultations to people who qualify for the type of work I do, which is E2 investor visas and EB5 visas. This is my specialty and I don't do any other visas. So if you are an entrepreneur who wants to invest or can invest at least $50,000 and you want to start your own business and you are from the treaty country, then you can qualify for a free consultation. Otherwise, my time doesn't allow to provide free consultation to everybody because then I would just never sleep. And uh, if you want, to, if you, want you can purchase a pay consultation, which is 300, 350 per hour, $300. Hello, how to immigrate to America? I need a job. Okay, so yeah, so today I do want to talk about how you can immigrate and one of the ways is to study, like I already discussed. You know, you can come here, you can study. If you don't have the money, you cannot afford to pay college or university, then uh, you can um, enroll to ESL school. ESL stands for English as a Second Language. And in, in, that, in that way, you can stay in the country legally, you can study, you can improve your lang English skills, the language skills, and then you can apply for a grad school or a university or a college. Again, if you can afford it, keep that in mind, it's expensive here. Um, but there's always a way. If you guys really want it, there's always a way. You know, I like to say that a lot because it's true. I want visa. Well, good for you, Syed. Um, the uh, student visa would be the easiest way, right? A relatively easy way. Obviously, if you don't want to study, you can come here on um, B visa, which is a tourist visa. And after that, you can change the status if you find... You know, over the years, guys, to be honest, you know, I went to school. I was looking for a sponsor, employer. I couldn't get one, uh, even though I graduated um, top law school in the country. Over the years, I realized that honestly, the the relatively easiest way is to start a business, and that's why I started to focus on this way. You know, because uh, every time you need to find a like an employer, it's it's a struggle. You have to find one, and then while you're employed, you kind of live in fear because, you know. You can be fired any day and then what are you going to do with your status? You have to take care of that, you know? And so it's, it's actually taking a risk to, in my opinion, obviously there are people who think that running a business is, is the biggest risk ever. But in my opinion, um, if you want to secure status in the United States, you shouldn't depend on anybody but yourself and your skills. I want to study in the U.S. Are you full? How do I do that? How, how do I get chance easily? Like I said, like uh, consider this uh, program English as a second language, which is relatively affordable compared to college universities. And uh, that should get you F1 visa. And then you can go and maybe enroll to university or, or grad school. And after that, you can, you can apply for optional practical training. Or you can start a business with investment of 50000 which is also relative because 50000 will be enough for a business that is, that is um, 
kind of small, you know, if you want to obviously buy a restaurant, 50,000 is not going to be enough money for you. So, you know, moving to the U.S. on student visa or B visa are temporary options. The other option, how to stay here longer, is to, like I said, you can start your company, start the business, because there are t countries that actually allow you to, this E2 visa depends, you have to be from a treaty country. So depending on where you're coming from, what's the treaty country, that is how long you can stay in the United States. Let me give you an example. If you are from Australia, you can stay for, you have a visa for four years, you can extend it. But if you are like from, for example, Jordan, you can really stay that long. I mean, you can stay in the United States up to two years, but the visa is only issued for three months, if you know what I mean. And therefore, you have to, you know, find the best strategy because not every country, when it comes to E2 visa, has the same rules. And there are countries that, like, for example, or Germany, for example, they gave you visa, E2 visa for five years, and then you can extend it for another five, another five, another five. In fact, you can have, like, 15 years on E2 visa, in theory, you know. But then, you know, later on, it would be wise to, to upgrade it for a green card. But you have to scale the business, grow the business a little bit. Khan, how can I apply from Greece? I have a EU PR. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if your PR is in EU. I mean, it doesn't matter. What's your citizenship, Khan? Nobody's asking about your PR, you know. These days people have different PRs from different countries. And the question is, what's your citizenship? Because that is going to establish the condition for you to move to the United States. Not necessarily what's your PR, permanent residence status. Okay. So, if you ask me, in my opinion, what's the easiest way, I, like I told you, I would start a business. That's the easiest way. If you don't speak English well, you have to learn first. That's why I would say ESL, school. Um, that would be probably the easiest way. And, you know, there are people, there are cases that, you know, this ESL, English as a Second Language schools, there are people who actually study in the U.S. for years under this status for like five, ten years and later on they go for university or maybe they get married here and they change it to a green card so the easiest way to get a green card would be a marriage obviously but i'm talking real marriage i'm not talking the fake marriages here okay i don't promote any of that stuff um the another way to obtain a green card now we're talking green card not e2 investor visa because there is a difference between green card and E2 visa, just so you understand, E2 visa is a non-immigrant visa category that allows you to enter the U.S. and live here, um, sort of temporarily. But the green card, the moment you got a green card, that is PR. It's a permanent residency and you can stay here, live here, do whatever you want. Not whatever you want, but you know what I mean. Um, and, and so... The way, the easiest way to obtain a green card, I mean, obviously would be the lottery. But if you were not selected, then would be a marriage. Now, if you are already married or you just, you, you, you haven't met love of your life that is American citizen, then in that case, there are other options such as employment, green card, through a sponsorship through the U.S. employer, if you qualify, there are several categories like that. Or um, there is the EB-5 green card, which is the green card for people, wealthy individuals who invest at least half a million or one million direct investment. The half a million investment goes to targeted employment areas. These are areas that are with high unemployment rate or rural areas these are areas where there is less than 20,000 in population. Or you invest into regional center projects, half a million. Um, and this is called indirect investment because you not necessarily manage the business. You, it's, it's, a, it's, it's investing money into this sort of fund 
and there is a, usually it's it, these are real estate development projects um and so hi Kosim. nice to see you again and uh or you can do 1 million into direct investment and if you invest directly into commercial enterprise and this can be any type of business as long as it's, it's commercial, meaning you can only invest into non-profit, obviously. And then you hire 10 people within the two years, you get a green card. So first you will get the conditional green card, then you have to remove the condition after two years, and then you obtain a permanent green card after three years. And so this would be a way, okay? And... You know, guys, there are ways, obviously, not everyone can qualify. Um, if you ask me, in my opinion, you know, I'm from Europe originally, and I understand uh, just the, in general the requirements when it comes to how to immigrate to European Union to get to be the, uh, the easiest way through Cyprus, um, as far as I know, to, to obtain a citizenship fairly quick. And then if I compare the requirements, you know, the, the system here, I mean, the, the immigration system is the most complex and complicated. That's why, you know, it's difficult. But at the same time, the lifestyle you can live here, it's, it's, just, it's just probably way better than, than in other countries. And again, it depends, okay, don't get me wrong, because you have to establish yourself here, you have to have a lifestyle here, you have to, you have to work hard first, but then eventually, um, I believe in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, obviously, you know, I traveled uh, around the world quite frequently over the past three years, and so I could see and compare different jurisdictions, different countries, and obviously this is my opinion, so don't, you don't have to take it in if you don't like it obviously you can create your own opinion but uh, it's my opinion that still I would say that this is one of the best countries and um, the system is relatively stable and so even if you want to do business you can do business here because that system the market it will allow you to produce and create the business and scale it um, whereas you know if I compare it for example the country where I'm from Slovakia um, you know, it's it's rather challenging. And again, it depends because if you do online business, it doesn't really matter where you are. You know, you can do the business anywhere because it's online and um, it's just a uh, it's completely different level and it's it's completely different economy, I believe, um, because you 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 run the business online and the Internet itself allows to do whatever you want. And so that being said. Okay, there is another question. Is it easy to get a loan for school? Well, if you obviously want to get a loan from here, um, then you need a co-signer, to be honest. Here in this country, you have to get a co-signer. And the co-signer for your loan uh, has to be a, you, either you a citizen or a resident, okay? Because they're not going to give you a loan since you don't have any credit history here. Um, so if you don't know anybody in this country, then I would maybe look into other options how to get a loan. Maybe a check how you can get a loan in your home country, okay? Check local banks and uh, first do that because honestly, getting a loan here, you need either resident or call center, okay? <laughs> Kwasim, yes, I am, I am a little bit tired this Friday, you know, and I, it has been a hard week for me, <laughs> but I'm okay, Kwasim, don't worry, I'm good, health is good, I'm just a little bit tired, <laughs> no, nothing, nothing's going on, it's just Friday, you know, it's been, it's been a hard week, okay, so I'm going to take a last question, guys, and then I'm going to, then I'm going to wrap up, okay? Hello, dear. Can I apply for a green card after completing my master's in the U.S.? Uh, Amir, it depends. And if you complete your master's in the U.S., it doesn't necessarily mean that you automatically can get a green card, okay? Once you get your master's, then you can um, uh, look for employer and most likely you will get H-1B visa, H-1B work visa. And from H-1B work visa, you can go for a green card. But first, you need that job. You need that employment, okay? 
uh, there are rare cases where you directly go for a green card after completing masters. I hope that helps. But you will be in the master cap category because uh, the H1B visa type has basically the, the cap limit, which is 85,000 and 20,000 is uh, given to people with a master degree. So you would be in that, in that category. And you know, H1B visas, it's another lottery, by the way, because like I said, there is a limit, there is a cap, 85,000 H1B visas per year. And if more people than 85, actually this year it was 200, some, around 200,000 people apply for, AB, uh, for H1B. And because of that, there was the lottery going on again. So it's another lottery. It's not, if you ask me, if I recommend it, I mean, not so much because it's a lottery. Nice video. Nice video, friend. And you are nice explanation. Or, and you are nice explanation. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, thank you so much. Hi there. Sean. Okay, guys. So, co-hosting. Okay, good to hear that you are fine. Having tired Friday. Stay blessed. <laughs> Yes, guys, it's time for the weekend. It's time to rest because I've been working hard, to be honest. I've done like, let me see. I've done like uh, 16 consultations and each of them like 30 or 40 minutes long this week. It's just too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up. Um, thank you for tuning in. You are amazing. I'll see you in my next live. Hopefully, um, hopefully I gave you some perspective. There are other options what you can do. And also what I'm going to do, I'm going to post a link. It's going to be below this video. And you can um, sign up for my webinar where I'm going to talk about how you can live in the United States without a green card. Okay, if you guys want to dig deeper into this topic, then you can sign up for the webinar. I'm going to post it below. And, uh, and sign up and then you'll learn more information how you can make it happen. So I'll see you in my next live. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, guys. Take, thanks, Kwasim. Take care. And I'll see you in next live. Bye. And have a great weekend, everybody.